split fiberglass moulds are necessary when you're trying to make a mould of an object of more than 180 degrees or of a shape that a one-piece mould would not release from. And there's many ways to make them. The techniques I'm about to show you are for experienced fiberglasses, so I won't cover laying up technique because you know I, I hate, hate to, to repeat, repeat myself. myself. I hate to repeat myself. So rather than take you step by step all the way through making one or two particular items, instead I'm going to show you a lot of different methods and techniques that I've developed over the last 20 years as a professional taxidermist and race car fabricator. First of all, work out where your flange lines need to be. For example, if I was to mould something like this milk bottle, where would the flange lines need to be so that the two halves of the mould would release from the job? Quite often you'll find on plastic items that you can see the factory uh, moulding line, that line you can follow. Whenever you've worked out where your flanges need to be, mark them on the job just to make it easy for yourself to follow. There are two basic types of split moulds. Flanged, which bolt together, and unflanged where the two pieces are made in two separate moulds and then brought together and bonded into one piece. Flanged split moulds all require you to add on a flange around the item that you're trying to mould and copy. They can only be used when the item that you want to make can be made inside when the mould is bolted together. Flange moulds are not just used to make hollow fibreglass items inside of them. They can also be used to reproduce foam mannequins for taxidermy and so forth. If you look at the mould of this deer carefully, you can see the moulding lines where the flanges were on the mould in which it was made. There's more than one way of adding flanges like this. The most suitable way is usually dictated by the shape of the job and by what it's constructed from. I'm going to make a split flanged mould of this taxidermy form for a cat's head. It's small, but I'll show you the techniques that can be used on jobs of any size. This is a fairly simple mould to make because it's basically just down the middle of the animal. So I'll mark my centre line where my flanges need to go. A little bit of body filler will fill in these gaps and lock the tin onto the form. All you do is lay fiberglass on one side, leave the tin in place and then mould the other side, drill holes through the tin and the fiberglass for your bolt holes and then take your two mould halves off. You don't need to put locating pins in the flanges because the bolt holes will do that for you. This technique will work on moulds where you need to curve the tin, not just on ones where the flange line is dead straight. With this tin in place, you can clearly see how this two-piece mould was made. It's easy to make a flange on this mannequin because you can put the tin into the soft foam. On an object, a solid object, where you couldn't do that, you would temporarily glue the tin to the object, perhaps say with body filler, mould the other side in fibreglass and then remove the glue and perhaps the tin as well and then mould the second side. For demonstration purposes, I've just used a small mannequin here, but this technique works 
on things as large as a life-size grizzly bear. How do you make a pair of split fiberglass moulds when for practical reasons you can't really stick a flange on the item that you're going to copy? Take for example this ice cream scoop. How are we going to make flange moulds of this? I'm going to half bury this ice cream scoop in sand but I've got to figure out as always where I want the dividing line and along here is where I want it. Mix up your plaster so it's really runny and smooth. And you only want a thin coating. When the plaster's dry, Fiberglass one side, then when your fiberglass is set, remove the plaster and mould the second side. That plaster method only works when your flanges are in a straight line. What do you do when that's not the case and where your flange line is in a curve? Well this is one of my favourite techniques. This inlet manifold is about as complicated and as curvy a shape as you could get. Let's see how we could mould it. This intake manifold now has a clay wall all the way around it where I want the flange to be and the holes in between the intake tubes are being filled with clay as well. Now that I've got clay going all the way around my job and filling up the holes in the intake tubes, I can make my first fiberglass piece of the mould. It may take me several pieces to be able to completely copy this item, but this is a method I've used with great success, even on things like the life-size bodies of pigs and dogs. You can copy anything this way. Moulds with no flange are the method to use when you cannot make the item in one piece within the moulds but rather must make it in two separate pieces which are then joined together. This would cover most car spoilers with a top side and a bottom side. Or this winged tailgate. I couldn't make it in one piece because I physically couldn't get right inside the rear wing edge to lay it up properly in one piece. Generally, when making an unflanged mould, like this tailgate, I lay up one half of it. So I laid up the top, I let the fibreglass hang over, and then as it was gelling, I trimmed it with my Stanley knife. Once it was set, then I turned it up the other way, and made the mould of the second half, trimming it up to the edge of the first half of the mould that I'd made. You don't have to get a perfect match edge between the two pieces of the mould because most of the time you'll be joining the pieces that you make inside them together with a filling glue that will absorb minor inaccuracies. There's a few ways of joining together fibreglass parts made in two or more matching moulds. In this case I just used a bead of body filler, brought the two parts together, put some tape around it, then sanded it and got a seamless appearance. Another way is to just fiberglass them together from the inside 
as I've done here as well, just to add extra strength. And a really careful look here will show that I've filled the tail wing itself with pouring foam for added strength. Either of these three methods would have done. In my case, I just did all three for overkill. <laughs> It's taken me 25 years to learn what I've shown you in this tutorial. So don't be too hard on yourself and give yourself time to learn these techniques. Then you won't see making split moulds as something to be avoided, but rather an opportunity to apply some unique skills.